Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're back on the little WPL E1 FPV vehicle. It's only going to be a quick video again though, as I'm recording on Saturday, so I haven't got that much time to make the video. On that note, one of the things that's been occupying me for the past few weeks has finally been resolved. So we should be able to start on some more involved things again soon. Anyway, first a quick recap. We have the E1, all completely stock as it came out of the box. Next we have an FPV headset with an Arduino 33 BLE taped to the side, running some nice software that turns it into a head tracker. Then we have a jumper T16 transmitter that runs Edge TX. The head tracker on the headset plugs into the top of the transmitter, so we get head position on three channels, pan, tilt and rotate. The other cable on the tracker runs to a USB power bank for, well, power. Now if we move the headset around we can see the three channels move on the T16 screen. Yay head tracking. I'll stick a link to the head tracker project and other relevant bits and pieces in the description. At the back of the E1 we can remove the white roof to reveal a huge cavernous space ready to fill with all sorts of fun technology. Something like this gimbal. But this one's for a model plane, but the principle is the same. We need a set of servos to move the camera based on the head tracker. This one's a bit wobbly though, which for driving around is going to make for a pretty unstable video. I think it's time for a redesign. Right, first up we have the original parts imported from the STL files. They were designed by Klopex, K-L-O-P-E-X, and are available on Thingiverse. Again, link in the description. For the Tundra gimbal, I tidied them up and I added a slot in the bottom for the pan servo arm. It works fairly well, but those little SG90 servos don't have an output bearing as such, so it's a bit wobbly. On the plus side, it is a very lightweight system, which is good for a flying model. And here's what I ended up with. The top two sections are similar to the original. The top part now has an extra servo mount for camera roll, and we've got a more secure mount for the servo arm. On the other side is a guide for the wires, so they're kept out of the way. The midsection for the tilt servo now has a set of mounting holes rather than the servo arm slot, and another wire guide. Otherwise, it's essentially the same. The big change is we now have a bearing for the tilt motion. It's just a press fit, but it makes a huge difference compared to the printed parts running on the printed parts of the old version. Moving down, we have the main reason for the redesign. The whole upper assembly is supported by a bearing. It turns smoothly, and importantly, it doesn't wobble. So when driving around the picture, it should be quite stable. Inside the bearing we have the shaft with the servo arm adapter on the bottom. The top of the shaft mounts to the bottom of the tilt servo mount with three screws and the servo adapter uses a square drive and a screw down the middle. It makes for a fairly strong drive so if the gimbal gets knocked it's not going to immediately break. Moving down again and we have the pan servo mount. The servo offers up from the bottom and a double ended arm gets attached to the adapter. None of the weight of the gimbal is transferred to the servo. It only sees rotational force, and maybe a touch of side load, as of course we've only got one bearing. Either way, it's going to be a huge improvement over just attaching the tilt directly to the top of the pan servo. Just for fun, here's an x-ray view. There's quite a few parts, but that's mainly so it's almost all printable without having to mess around with supports. Even a low-end printer like mine can make a good go of it. The gimbal needs something to mount to, so here's the replacement roof. Towards the front we have the plate from the gimbal, it just offers up from the bottom and uses four M3 screws to attach. A bit further back can we have another insert, this one's just a blank for now, but the idea is I can make a version with antenna mounts without having to print a complete roof, which would take another four or five hours of printing. The roof itself has lots of holes for LEDs, I want to make sure the model is highly visible. Plus, there's three holes at each end to add a magnetic mount, but I've still got to design that. It'll just be a simple magnet at each end, so it should be easy enough. And back to the real world. Here it is complete. Well, I've still got to add the camera of course, but the gimbal itself is all there. There's still some work to do on the wire routing, but it is functional. More importantly is, if we try and wobble it, you can see it's far more stable. 
There's still a bit of play, but that's mostly in the servo gear trains. And other than using far nicer servos, there's really not much we can do about it. Under the roof, you can see the pan servo hanging out the bottom. All three servos and the beacon are connected up to an 8-channel radio master receiver with a range extender on the pan servo. This will probably change in the future, but it's enough to get it all working. The whole lot can get crammed into the back of the model and the roof neatly sits in position. We still need some magnets though, as it would easily fall out. If we connect up a receiver battery, we can see it in action. First, since that beacon is a bit distracting, we can change its mode with one of the switches on the transmitter until it turns off. Then, if we bring the radio in a bit closer, we can go through the gimbal modes. First, with the mode switch up, it's locked forward. If all else fails, it should give a good enough view to drive by. In the middle position, the left stick pans the gimbal. If the head tracker gives up for any reason, we can at least check left and right for passing traffic on the layout. With the switch in the down position, it enables the head tracker, but first we need to zero it. We'd need to get comfy in a chair, facing straight ahead, then press the button connected to the head tracker, telling it we're facing forwards. Then we flip the switch down to get control. Moving the headset now moves the gimbal, pan, tilt and rotate. With how far the FPV equipment has come, and of course the head tracker project, these days the most difficult bit is the gimbal. Unless you throw quite a bit of cash at a brushless gimbal, most are just very basic and not really that useful. Of course, if you don't have a 3D printer it can be a bit more difficult, but there are businesses that will print things out for you. Right now the E1 itself is of course still stock, so to drive it we need to use the WPL radio which will get us going, but the idea of course is to hook up a couple of small ESCs and use the Jumper TX to drive the truck as well as handle the gimbal. Ultimately, I'd like to put together a custom board that does some sound and whatnot, but I think the two ESCs will be a good interim solution. Okay, so that's going to be it for this week. As always, thanks for watching, like if you like, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!